Hello, guys. Thank you so much for coming to my session, uh, boosting training and inference performance via topology aware scheduling of heterogeneous resources. My name is He Cao. I'm a senior software engineer at ByteDance. I'm also a maintainer of the Catalyst project. Uh, first, I'd like to start with a few statements. Yeah, first, the views expressed in this presentation are my own. Second, the, sec the content of this presentation has nothing to do with the bad dance in house models. Third, the analysis, the analysis relies on certain assumptions, and the results may contain errors. First, I'd like to begin with an introduction of the back background of large language modules. Uh, and its integration with the cloud native technology, and uh, then give an overall introduction to the Catalyst project. Next, I will introduce topology management mechanisms in Kubernetes, including the node level topology manager and the master level topology aware scheduling solution, along with their limitations. Then I will present how Catalyst implements topology aware scheduling in AI scenarios, including improved NUMA aware scheduling, inter RDMA affinity at Tor level, and GPU RDMA affinity at the PCIe switch level. Finally, I will discuss the future roadmaps of Catalyst in the cloud native AI domain and introduce the Catalyst community. First, I will give an introduction of the background and the Catalyst project. As shown in this Google, Google Trends chart, since the end of 2022, large language models have earned increasing attention. In addition, if you search for LLM and Kubernetes together on Google, you will find millions of results. This indicates that an increasing number of LLM applications are leveraging Kubernetes as their infrastructure. And also, in 2021, OpenAI expanded, expanded its Kubernetes cluster to 7,500 nodes, which further illustrates that the training and the inference of LLM demands increasingly higher computational power. Next. I will share some LLM training and serving background. According to OpenAI, for a GPT-3 with 175 billion parameters, it will take uh, 355 years to train on a single V100 GPU and uh, about 15 years on one A100 GPU. Alternatively, it will take 34 days to train with about 1,000 A100 GPUs. For our ARM serving, it also requires high-end GPUs, such as A100. For some models, a single A100 GPU can handle less than one request per second. From these facts, we can see that training and serving our ARMs both require ultra-scale computational resources. Since training is distributed, the performance bottleneck of AI workloads has shifted from computation to networking to improve resource efficiency of LM applications. Fine-grained resource management is essential, such as micro topology management. To achieve fine-grained resource management capabilities, we have incubated a resource management system called Catalyst. The name Catalyst is derived from the word Catalyst in chemical reactions, and the K symbolizes its ability to provide enhanced resource management capabilities for all workloads running within the Kubernetes ecosystem. In the second part, I will delve into the topology management mechanisms in Kubernetes. Uh, well, in traditional SMP architecture, all cores are connected to a single memory bus and have equal access to memory. This architecture is known as Uniform Memory Architecture, or UMA. Uh, however, 
as the number of cores continues to grow, the, the SMP architecture faces bottlenecks. As shared, as, shared, as shared memory bus bandwidth cannot keep up with, with the uh, increasing core number, uh, consequently, memory is no longer uh, unified, but is, in, but is divided into multiple independent sub subsystems, leading to the new, the, the new MA architecture. In this picture, we can see that the machine has two new MA, new MA nodes. While our memory is accessible to any CPU core, local memory access is the fastest. The access time uh, for non-local memory is unpredictable and it depends on the types of, and the numbers of the internal connections. And in most cases, CPU cores on a new MAR node will share, uh, will share the L3 cache. If the cores of a process are spread across different new MAR nodes, it can lead to a higher L3 cache misread. Last but not least, in AI scenarios, uh, assigning CPU cores and devices on the same, no same new MAR nodes can also yield better performance. Next, let's talk about the topology manager in Kubernetes. This feature became beta in Kubernetes 1.18 and uh, reached reach, reach stable at 1.27. Without the topology manager, CPU manager, memory manager, and the device manager uh, assign resources independently, which would lead to suboptimal allocation results. Topology manager is designed to coordinate various resources onto same new MAR nodes. To be specific, during the uh, get topology hint phase, yeah, CPU manager, memory manager, and the device manager report new MAR hints to topology manager. Then the topology manager coordinates the hints and uh, uh, record the, uh, the optimal result. In the allocated phase, need some managers allocated resources based on this result. So the new MAR nodes can be aligned. However, the topology manager also has certain limitations. Topology manager acts as a uh, 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 an animation controller on the node side, yeah. Uh, it is a module of the Kubernetes, and it doesn't impact the scheduling phase. That is to say, pods may be scheduled to a wrong node that cannot meet, meet the uh, resource requirements at the new MAR node level. And then the, po the pods will, uh, will fail. Of from this picture, yeah, you can see that the Kubernetes 6 provides a new MA aware scheduling solution. Uh, you can see you can see the topology updates, yeah, such as node feature discovery or uh, resource topology exporter RTE. Yeah, reports the topology information to the node resource topology CRD. Uh, they also introduced a new scheduling plugin named Node Resource Topology Match, which gets, which gets information from the NRT to filter out nodes with insufficient resources at the new MAR node level. Uh, in the initial new MAR aware scheduling implementation, new MAR node level cache wasn't introduced to the scheduler plugin. Instead, the scheduler plugin gets the current state from the NRT. This can lead to racing conditions because the information reported to NRT may not be timely enough. As a result, the scheduler may schedule too many ports to a node, still causing the topology manager's automation fail. To address this issue, uh, Kubernetes 6 introduced a new MA node level cache in the scheduler plugin. For example, in this picture, since the scheduler doesn't make the final decision on which new MA node the policy should be assigned to. So you can see on node two, 
when new model the zero and the new model the one can both meet the pause resource requirements, the scheduler plugin doesn't know which new model the two accounts for the resources on. To address this, a pessimistic over allocation mechanism was introduced. Resources are accounted for each new model node that meets the requirements, and once the final allocation result is reported to NRT, the over-allocated resources are released. In the third part, I will present how Catalyst implements topology-aware scheduling in LRM scenarios. Let's start with the improved NUMA-aware scheduling. In the previous part, we discussed how Kubernetes 6 optimized NUMA-aware scheduling with cache. However, the pessimistic over allocation solution has some issues. For one thing, uh, since it follows a pessimistic knocking model, it will cause scheduling performance issues. For another thing, in training scenarios, co-scheduling is required. If NUMA aware scheduling and the co-scheduling are used together, it can lead to unexpected data dialogues. So, in Catalyst, we let the scheduler take on the role of the topology manager, which means the scheduler will make the final decision on which new man node the pod should be assigned to. What's more, it, it's important to know that the CPU manager and the memory manager in the Kubernetes cannot access the scheduler's allocation results and follow it, and the Kubernetes doesn't offer an extension mechanism to the CPU manager and the memory manager. Therefore, we introduced an out of band resource manager module in the Catalyst agent. Uh, you can see the green, green one, yeah. Or ORM for short. It replaces the CPU manager and the memory manager in Kubernetes by providing a plugin based approach to extend the CPU manager and the memory manager allocation strategies. Yeah, in addition, ORM supports two modes for injecting resource allocation policies, the NRI mode and the bypass mode. We have implemented an NRI server in the, within the ORM, which is synchronously invoked by container D when certain container lifecycle events happen, such as run pause sandbox, create a container, room pause sandbox, etc. This allows the injection of customized resource management policies. Additionally, for users with older versions of ContainerD, ORM also offers a bypass mode that can periodically update the ContainerD C group configurations. In the ORM mode, the response data of Kubernetes pod resources API may, is no longer accurate. Therefore, we have also implemented an out-of-band pod resources server within ORM. So modules like Catalyst Reporter can obtain accurate CPU and memory states and report them to the KCNR CRD for schedule awareness. In vanilla Kubernetes, a single policy is applied to all pods on a node via the topology manager policy uh, option. Yeah, in this, in the in addition, core pinning requires the pod to be in the guaranteed QoS level, uh, which requires configuring the CPU limit for containers. It, it may lead to unexpected CPU throttling. In Catalyst, we can specify per pod alignment policies through pod annotations such as dedicated cores, and NUMA binding, and NUMA exclusive. For some latency sensitive workloads, such as inference services of advertisement, search, and recommendation, NUMA exclusive can effectively avoid memory bandwidth computation. As we can see from this picture, uh, increasing core, core density on a single CPU is a trend 
For example, AMD Genoa features up to 192 cores on a single socket. In this case, Numa node affinity is insufficient to meet the performance demands of LLM workloads. Therefore, Catalyst implements a CCX level alignment to achieve the L3 cache affinity. Next, let's discuss uh, the inter RDMA affinity at Tor level. As shown in this picture, network switches typically follow a spine leaf topology. The lowest layer of the structure is typically called TOR. The closer the switches connecting RDMA devices are, the greater the bandwidth for communication between ports. Therefore, we prefer to assign RDMA devices on the same TOR to, uh, to ports within a job. In this solution, we let the RDMA device plug-in to collect the Tor topology through the LLDP protocol and acts as a plug-in of the Catalyst reporter framework to report the Tor topology to the KCNRCRD for schedule awareness. And one core issue uh, is that the Kubernetes scheduler operates at the pod level, but we need to implement topology affinity among different pods within a pod. Uh, so this is a, a job scheduling issue. Yeah. Therefore, we achieve pod group level scheduling. Uh, we, we make full use of the pre-filter and the post-filter stages of the scheduling framework. In the pre-filter stage, we attempt to select a tour for the pod group, and, in, and during the scheduling process, uh, if the nodes under this tour cannot meet the requirements, we will switch to the next tour in the post-filter stage. Okay, next, let's discuss the GPU RDMA affinity at the PCIe switch level. As shown in this picture, there are multiple layers of connection between GPU and RDMA devices for inference workloads. If a GPU and an RDMA are assigned uh, at the sa same root complex, GPU direct RDMA can be used to accelerate communication and then go over the hierarchy of the PCIe switch shared by a GPU and then RDMA, the greater the bandwidth. So we have also customized a strategy for the GPU RDMA affinity at the PCIe switch level. Finally, I will discuss future works and introduce the Catalyst community. Uh, the core objective of topology well scheduling in Catalyst is to enhance serving and training performance. To achieve these goals, we plan to uh, support some new features and evolve the architecture. For example, we plan to enrich the scenarios for topology well scheduling to support GPU co-location, yeah, which means yeah, mm, multiple applications can run uh, on a single GPU card and, uh, dynamic, and uh, dynamically adjust the, the resource allocation of each container. Yeah, and to integrate catalysts with the dynamic resource allocation, yeah, the DRA. Uh, here is the catalyst community and my contact information. Yeah, you can uh, scan this QR code to join the community not group. Yeah, or you can also uh, uh, join the bi-weekly community meeting. Yeah, which uh, was 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 held on uh, on on third day. Yeah. Okay, we welcome everyone to participate in communication contributions.
If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me for discussion. Uh, and due to the time limitations, this session will not include a Q&A part. I sincerely apologize for that. If you have any questions, uh, we can discuss them face to face after the party, after the session, sorry, thank you. <laughs>